Today we're gonna to talk about the pushing muscles or pressing muscles. So these are basically all the muscles in the front side of the body and we're going to compare and contrast these to the pulling muscles which are on the back side and how, again, if you apply this to your fitness, if you just generally include some pushing and some pulling for your upper and lower body, you're gonna have a good well-rounded fitness system. But this video is gonna take you on a virtual anatomy tour of this 3D model. We're gonna move this person around and explore some exercises that actually use these muscles so you can see it like x-ray vision but in three dimensions um, and you can get a better understanding of the connections in the body so you can get creative with your exercise let's check it out Real quick, my name is Anthony Davis. This is Shapeshift Wellness, where we explore the science of fitness, yoga, and meditation. If you like that sort of thing, I do have a full functional movement anatomy course on my website. It is an 18 hour course that dives very deep into the anatomy of a human being and teaches you everything that a movement teacher of any kind needs to know to safely and intelligently and creatively um, teach movement. Now let's learn about the anterior aspect, the front side of the body in pressing or pulling activities. Let's check it out. Okay, so recently I showed you a video of pulling activities that were all the muscles on the back side of the body. And I happened to use the right-sided lats, right-sided upper body muscles. Now, if the right side back side of the body, okay, um, is working, then the left side of the chest, and the anterior oblique sling, which is pictured here, is also working. So they work like an X from front to back side of the body. So I'm actually showing you all the muscles that in a in your gait, um, if you compare it to my last video, I have chosen to show you the opposite side, which means that it's actually the same side, the same muscles that would be working on the correct side compared to my last video. So if you're really geeky, then this is trying to get it in your head that at the same time as you are pushing, you are always going to be technically pulling with the back side of the body on the opposite side, okay? That might be too much for some of you, but that's okay. Um, I do have other videos explaining the anterior and posterior oblique slings. So you can check that out and that might be really um, mind blowing if you've never seen this concept before, it's pretty cool. Now let's check out these pressing muscles. So basically when we talk about pushing muscles or uh, pressing muscles, Usually we're talking about the pecs, the anterior deltoids, that's anterior means front, and the serratus anterior when it comes to upper body muscles. And then when we're talking about lower body muscles, usually we're just talking about your quads as in terms of pushing, okay? So if you're doing a lower body pushing exercise, you're specifically trying to train your quads. Um, you can't help but also train some of the muscles on the backside, like your glutes and hamstrings, which are usually called pulling muscles. So I don't wanna confuse you. I have not included those muscles in this tour. By the way, I'm leaving lots of muscles out because if we did that, we would be here all day. So I want you to get the heavy hitters here. So. Uh, for the upper body pushing, we're looking at pecs, anterior deltoids, and serratus anterior, which is this cool little muscle that tucks underneath the shoulder blades and anchors to your rib cage and harnesses your shoulder blade and secures it to your rib cage. I have included muscles that are not typically considered pulling, or sorry, pushing muscles, like your external and internal obliques in your abs, right, or your adductors. And that is because, um, as you see here, if we zoom in a bit and we look at the fibers on these muscles. So here's the external oblique muscles here, and they are basically continuous with the internal obliques on the opposite side of the body. Okay, so they work together functionally. And then if you look here, this is one of your adductor muscles and these fibers basically come up and form a meshwork that feeds into this line of tension, okay? So when they're working together, they're working to pull the opposite shoulder forward. So if I am doing a pressing exercise with my pec, I'm doing some um, sort of um, adduction, as we can see here. So I'm pulling, wait, 
this is the motion right here, okay? So as the, the arm moves from the outside and it's pushing to the inside, okay, outside to pushing to the inside, that's your push, or here, let's look at it from another angle. So outside and pushing inside, this will be like a, a fly. So you're laying on a, a bench face up, holding um, two dumbbells and the dumbbells are out to the side and you're flying, you're uh, basically lifting them over, um, you know, straight up. Then, so here, to the outside to pushing in. As you push the shoulder forward, you can't help but anchor on your oblique muscles, right? So the obliques, if we look at what they do, they're going to rotate us. So if we look at, they do some other stuff, but for our purposes right now, I want you to see that they rotate. So right there, pretty cool, right? So we're going from this neutral position and then the same side as the shoulder that was pressing, the abs are helping to rotate. This would be more in a single arm um, pressing, like if you were pushing a door open, um, or if you were just doing a one-armed um, press of some kind, like a standing cable press, for example. So if you were doing that, then your arm is pushing forward, but also your trunk is rotating because these ab muscles, these obliques are rotating you. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And the, the same side, um, the opposite side, sorry, of the internal obliques would be doing the same thing at the same time. So underneath this muscle here, if I fade that, you can see underneath it, there are these fibers deep in the belly that on the opposite side are actually helping to pull the trunk to that side. And then if we continue this line of reasoning and we look towards the adductors, and we look at um, the fact that they flex the hip. So you might be doing some sort of pressing and as you press, you're, you're going to flex at the opposite hip. And not only are you gonna flex at the opposite hip, but you're going to pull the knee in towards the midline. So there, pull the knee towards the midline. So you start maybe with the foot kind of out because you took a step to grab the thing or to push the thing and you pull the knee towards the midline as you press with the opposite, the left side of the arm, okay? So um, if we're pressing, then we might also be using the uh, quads and the quads are generally uh, responsible, here we go, for uh, knee extension. And if we look here, boom, so let's zoom out. Here we go, we're looking at the front side, the right foot uh, and leg. So as it contracts, the knee straightens. So the quads straighten the knee. So this would be, for example, a squat, you would see is a good exercise to train the quads. So let's check that out. So here we are, we're looking at a squat, and of course the knee, as you as your butt sinks down, you're bending your knees significantly, which puts a lot of load into your quads, which is the front side of your leg, and as you straighten, as you lift your hips up, you are using your quads to um, push, Basically, you're trying to push your heels down into the ground. You're pushing with your quad muscles to straighten the knees. Now, yes, you are technically using some pulling muscles on the back side of the body as well, but I just want you to focus on the pressing, the pushing, right? Um, in As though it were isolated, just so you understand the concept. So the front side of the body, we're trying to train the quads. We're trying to put as much load as we can into the quads. So if the knees go forward, Cool, that's great because it's a feature. It puts more load into the quads. It means that you're strengthening your quads more than if your knees were back and you were doing like a deadlift, which would be more into the um, pulling muscles on the back side of the leg, which is your hamstrings. So if we look again at this, and you, I just wanna point out again, so you've got your anterior deltoid and your um, pec major that are uh, helping to push your arm forward, but they're anchoring upon your external and internal obliques and actually your uh, rectus abdominis and transverse, uh, all that stuff too. And that anchors to the pelvis and the pelvis, cause there's a hip joint there, has to anchor on something too. So the, that has to anchor upon your adductors and that goes down into the leg and then eventually into the ground. Now, the one muscle that I haven't pointed out uh, is this serratus anterior here. So it's kind of on the back side, but it helps to pull the shoulder blade forward. So if we look at the motion of the serratus anterior, 
it's awesome. So it really helps to pull that shoulder blade forward. So we start from this neutral position. We're looking at the left shoulder from sort of a back angle view. And the serratus anterior pulls the shoulder. Forget the arm. It doesn't actually move the arm. Okay. It just moves the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade moves forward. Okay. Forward. Forward. And if I zoom around here and we look at this person from the front, so forward, right? Forward. Cool. So I hope that helps to understand, again, the, the deeper connections of the uh, human body here in pressing activity, activities. I hope that you can see how from shoulder to uh, knee to foot, right? From really from hand to foot, we have this complicated network of muscles that work together. And although we call them separate muscles, they really act together to perform one motion. So they act like one big muscle. The body's pretty cool. It's much cooler than your textbooks give it credit for. Um, if you have questions, leave them in the comments and I will see you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care.